Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be looking at uh, Intel's MKL, which is its math kernel library. So as we've kind of discussed in other videos about the C++ standard library, we don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every time we do something uh, inside of a programming language. Now, uh, this is especially true when it comes to you know heavily optimized code or things that we want to run, uh, accelerate or run really quickly. Now, the reason you know why I say especially so is because uh, when we're doing something like uh, performance optimizations, a lot of times this is really tied to the specific architecture that we're working on, and then finding those low-level architectural details that we can exploit inside of our code uh, instead of high-level code can be very difficult and time-consuming. So if we had to do so, if everyone had to do this by themselves, this is a lot of just kind of unnecessary, repeated work. So companies like Intel, they'll release uh, optimized libraries for their specific hardware, and MKL is an example of this. So what we're going to look at today is uh, the general metrics multiplication from the MKL library, specifically the uh, double precision implementation. And what we'll do is we'll compare that against our own implementation, uh, which will be, you know, we won't have any performance optimizations uh, in it, and uh, it'll just be kind of so. You know, that being said, it'll just be a naive implementation. But we'll see that with zero effort of just calling a function from this MK uh, from the math kernel library, you know, we can get this. We can get a very good speed up over a naive implementation. So our naive implementation will be implemented here in this naive uh, functions that we'll use to compare uh, other uh, other examples of things from the MKL, MKL in the future. Here we have simple gym that we've just implemented as a templated uh, as a templated function. And so it'll take three things. It'll take a matrix A, B, and C. Matrix A will be dimensions M by K. Matrix B will be dimensions K by N. And then uh, matrix C will be uh, the result matrix, which will be an M by N matrix. Now, uh, the way that Jim works, or it's usually implemented inside of libraries like this, is it'll have two scaling factors, one alpha and another beta. So alpha will be just a scaling factor that every element in A will be multiplied by, and then beta will be a scaling factor that every element in C will be multiplied by. Now, the, what Jim actually computes will be uh, alpha times A times the matrix B plus beta times the matrix C. So that's really what we're implementing when we're implementing this uh, dgem. So uh, for our implementation for matrix multiplication, we just need a, a triply nested for loop. So our first for loop will go over every single row in the matrix. Then for each row, we have to go over every single column. And then for each row column pair, we'll accumulate uh, a value that will be the result of matrix multiplication for that single element. So at the very end of this uh, third for loop, we'll have a temp value that will correspond to uh, what are, uh, will be a final result, a single final result in that result matrix, in this case C. And so we'll implement that alpha times A times element of B here inside of this for loop. And then over here, when we're writing it back to the result matrix, we'll go ahead and scale C by beta and then add it to temp, which will be our accumulated result. And that's it. So this will compute, uh, this will compute um, a double precision or really whatever uh, we specified as because it's templated uh, matrix multiplication. And then we'll have a couple other helper functions, one for initializing a matrix. So if we don't give it a value, uh, it'll be default one and it will go ahead and uh, it will go ahead and uh, initialize this with a, uh, it'll initialize this matrix with random numbers between zero and 99 inclusive. And then uh, otherwise it'll just initialize it to all zeros. And then we'll have another helper function that we'll use for uh, profiling. So this will just go ahead and use uh, from the standard library, this chrono, this high resolution clock, and it will go ahead and return whatever you know, that count is now. So we can get a, a nice fine grain measurement of how long it takes for these functions to run. And we'll do that for both MKL, uh, the MKL implementation, and our naive implementation. So that being said, let's actually look at the MKL implementation, or rather how we use the MKL implementation. The nice thing about these libraries is that we don't have to care about the code uh, or how it's actually implemented uh, underneath. We can just call it. So if we go to dgem.cpp, 
here we have uh, our program. So like we said, it's going to calculate this. Uh, this matrix C will be the result of alpha time, which is a scalar value, times a matrix A, times a matrix B, plus beta times a matrix C. And so what we'll have to do is we'll have to include a header file for MKL, and that'll just be this MKL.h. And we'll have to, when we're compiling, we'll have to uh, pass the compiler the location of this MKL.h, which we'll go over later. So then we'll include a couple of namespaces. So namespace standard for printing, and then the standard chrono, uh, just to uh, simplify how long uh, when we're trying to actually calculate uh, using those high resolution clocks, we just use this to, for brevity. So like any kind of function or any implementation of a matrix multiplication, we'll have to allocate some space first. So we'll need uh, matrices A, B, and C. And then for our dimensions, we'll go by the MKL example and we'll have our M dimension be 2000, our K dimension be 200, and our N dimension be 1000. So our final result of an m by k times a k by n matrix will be an m by n matrix, so it'll be a 2000 by 1000 uh, matrix. Now our scaling factors, we'll leave them very simple. So alpha will be just one and beta will be zero. So essentially we're just computing um, matrix A times matrix B. We're really ignoring the, uh, the final uh, beta times C and this alpha doesn't have any impact because it's just one. So instead of using normal malloc uh, that would, we'd use to allocate uh, memory on the heap uh, in C or using new to allocate memory uh, in C++, we'll instead use uh, MKL malloc. So there's its own implementation of malloc that uh, we can squeeze a little bit of extra performance here by specifying how it should be aligned or how this memory should be aligned. Uh, so in this case, we want to align it 64-byte uh, aligned memory. So we'll go ahead and, you know, we'll go ahead and tell MKL malloc I need this size. So we'll need size for an M by K matrix, a K by N matrix, and an M by N matrix. And I want the alignment to be 64 bytes. Then we'll go ahead and initialize these matrices. So we'll call the templated function with double, and then A and B will initialize just normally with random numbers. And then C will initialize with all zeros because we really just want it to store a final result. This is just an example. Then, We'll go ahead and profile our uh, result from the uh, MKL implementation. So to call the MKL implementation, all we need to do is call CBLOS. So BLOS stands for basic linear algebra subroutines. So these are just, you know, BLOS is really just a, generally a collection of linear algebra uh, operations that are common that we want to accelerate. And so the specific one we want to accelerate is DGEM. And then We'll have a couple parameters here or arguments to this function that we're not really using, but we'll go ahead and go over them anyway. So we can specify whether you know this function should assume you know what the memory layout of each of these matrices in, uh, are. So in this case, we'll just assume that it's in row major layout, which is what you know you know modern programming languages like C and C++ you know they they assume that things are in row major layout. Older languages like Fortran can assume things like column major. Uh, another thing here is we can say whether or not we want to transpose uh, matrix A or B. In this case, we don't want to transpose them at all, so we'll just have CBLOS no trans, which stands for don't transpose the matrix. And then we'll go ahead and give our dimensions, so M, N, and K. And then we'll give our uh, scaling, uh, our uh, scaling value alpha, and then A which is a pointer to our matrix, and then we'll give it k. So k is the leading dimension for this matrix, which means that how long are each of the rows in this matrix. And then for b, we'll pass it b, and how long are the rows of matrix b, or the leading um, uh, the leading dimension. And then we'll pass it uh, the scaling va uh, factor for c, which is beta. We'll pass it a pointer to c, and then same thing, the leading dimension, how long are the rows in c, which is n. Right, and then we'll call our special function get time, and we'll go ahead and use the auto type so we don't have to specify a type for it, um, because this will be you know, a little more complicated than just say a double. It will be from the uh, standard chrono library. So for brevity, we'll just use auto. So then we'll we'll calculate how long this actually took using uh, the chrono library, 
and so we'll figure that out as a double and so using uh, subtracting t2 minus t1 we'll get the total length of this call so t1 is taken just before the function call t2 is taken just after the function call and then we'll go ahead and figure out how much time has elapsed for the mkl implementation then likewise we'll call our simple gem now it's a lot more simple than the uh, call to uh, the C plus D gem from MKL, and that's because we don't handle things like transposing the matrices or you know, specifying whether it's row major or column major. And uh, we'll go ahead and do get time again for both of these, and then we'll go ahead and calculate the total time and print that out so elapsed time simple. And then we'll go ahead and we have to be good about managing our memory, so we'll go ahead and free it at the very end of the program and return zero. Now, for compiling something like this, there's a couple things that we need to you know, understand. So this is a library. We need to link against the library to actually use uh, these function calls. And so we need to also include the header so that we know inside of the file um, you know, the signature for these function calls. Now, just so I don't have to type this out every time, I went ahead and made a make file that assumes that in your environment you've set up two things. So you've set up uh, the, you know, an environment variable that specifies the directory for the MKL libraries and another one that specifies the directory where the include files are or the .h files are for MKL. Now MKL you can just download from the uh, Intel site. I think you have to register but it's free so you can download it and install it. And then uh, in my case, so I have this set up in my if I go to my .bashrc file, at the very bottom, I have export mkl lib, and then I have the directory where all the libraries are. So these will be the .so files. So that will be an opt intel compilers and libraries, Linux, mkl, lib, intel64. And the include directory is the same, except it'll be uh, uh, include instead, instead of lib. And then I go ahead and add the lib directory to my load library path. So with these, uh, the shared object or these dynamically linked libraries, I need to make sure that at runtime uh, we know the location of these libraries. And how we know the location is by adding it to this load library path. So as a quick example, right? So if I go ahead and go back to the make file real quick. So I need all these compiler flags. So I need openMP and then I need all the MKL libraries as well as P threads for multi-threading. Uh, math libraries. So these will all just be under the compiler flags and you can look at the guide on uh, on Intel's MKL site that if you're using a specific uh, function from MKL or you, maybe you're using something for their cluster stuff you might need different uh, to link against different uh, parts of the of MKL. So in this case we need MKL core, this uh, LP64, GNU thread, P threads, open in P, etc. And so I've just put that into compiler flags. So in our actual compilation itself, we're just doing G. Then we're saying where are the library is located. That's what this dash L says. And that's uh, that'll be where we've set up in that dot bash RC file, so MKL libdir. Dash I says where are the include files. So like I said, we need to specify where is that MKL.h located? Well it's included or it's located here at that mkl include dir that I've set up already as an environment variable. And then, of course, our input file dgem.cpp, our output file is just going to be dgem, and then we'll add all our compiler flags at the very end, so these are all the libraries I'm going to link against. And then I'll, uh, I've got a clean function just so we can get rid of the, uh, get rid of the binary easily. So I can go ahead and just run make. It'll run this, uh, it'll run this uh, compilation. And then I've got my binary. So just to kind of stress why we need that uh, LD library path. So if I do LDD on dgem, we see that uh, we'll zoom out a little bit. So we see that you know lib mkl intel lp64. So these are the things we linked against. We see that there's a directory associated with it where it can find this uh, this shared object or this dynamically linked library and memory location. If I say clear my LD library path, so if I just do export ld library path equals blank right so if I do echo and I print that variable again we see that there's nothing there so if I do ldd again on dgem we see what happens we see that all of these libraries that I linked against 
that aren't say part of the standard library or the directories that LDD, you know, kind of, or that uh, automatically can get detected. So things like pthread or GCC, all these libraries, we see that our special ones, so for MKL, are all of a sudden not found. So MKL core, MKL GNU thread, MKL Intel LP64, these aren't found anymore. So this is why it's important to set up your LD library path. But I can fix this real quick by just calling source on uh, my bash RC file again, right? And this will go ahead and reinitialize my environment. And so if I do echo load library path again, we see that it has what I've added previously to LD library path. And if I do LDD again on DGEM, we see that it can find these libraries again. So now I can run it. So we'll go ahead and zoom in again, and we'll go ahead and run DGEM. And we see that you know we get quite a bit of benefit from uh, from running uh, using MKL versus our sample implementation. But the real key thing that's important here is that not only you know a 10x improvement to our our code uh, here uh, for our simple code would get us down to you know uh, 0.12 seconds, right? So that's still roughly you know, four times worse than the MKL implementation. And the key thing here is that for the MKL implementation, I didn't have to do anything. All I did was call a function. Right? And so that's where these libraries are you know, very, very useful is because we don't have to do all the optimizations ourselves. So I've been talking a lot about optimizations, uh, but I haven't really said what they are. So for some of these things, uh, it comes down to parallelization. Right, and it generally comes down to parallelization for these algorithms. So with things like matrix multiplication, matrix multiplication is kind of is a very common problem, and so we have a lot of very nice ways that we can parallel uh, parallelize matrix multiplication. So this could mean running multiple threads uh, to do matrix multiplication. It also means doing things like using some of the you know specialized hardware that's in modern Intel chips, uh, which is what we call SIMD hardware or vector hardware. So SIMD stands for single instruction multiple data, which means that for a single instruction, we're actually doing multiple computations uh, in parallel for this one instruction. So if we have you know SIMD hardware or vectorized hardware, you know we can do things like you know multiplication or addition, but instead of doing it on a single element, we can do it on say four elements or eight elements or you know with more modern stuff, say 16 elements at the exact same time. And so this really helps speed things up in a normal compiler. Uh, a compiler won't automatically use vector instructions. So, you know, these hand-tuned libraries, you know, they especially use vector instructions uh, because it's really, really hard for a normal compiler to figure out, you know, how to use uh, these vector instructions and where it can use it safely or, you know, just finding places uh, to do that without being, you know, directly told, hey, I want you to use vector instructions here. So um, you know, this is really a benefit of using these optimized libraries that will make use of these things. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this example. So this was a brief introduction to in, uh, Intel's math kernel library. As always, feel free to check out my stuff at uh, github.com slash coffee before arch where I keep all of the code that I use um, for these series. So I've got stuff on GPU programming with CUDA. Uh, this is part of a crash course in C++. I've got Python 3 and then as well as parallel programming in C++. So this is where I go into say MPI, uh, P threads, Windows threads, etc. Uh, also data structure stuff as well. So we looked here at C++ Crash Course, and so I've got this broken down into C++ 11 stuff and some more basic stuff. We're looking at optimized libraries now, so this is part of MKL, and then here's this dgym.cpp. So feel free to download this, play around with it. Make sure you also have to download, um, you know. Intel's MKL, it's, uh, li it's likely that you, do you don't have it on your computer already. Um, so you'll need that as well if you want to run this code. So feel free to you know, send me any questions or you know, maybe requests or what type of topics that you would like to see in the future. But that's going to do it for me for today. My name's Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.